All right, guys, today I'm going to tell you absolutely everything you need to know about professions in Wrath of the Lich King Classic and how they change from TBC to Wrath of the Lich King. And obviously all of the unique bonuses that each profession provides to your character. Firstly, let's jump into blacksmithing. So there's absolutely no need for a specialization like armorsmith or weaponsmith to craft something anymore. You can basically craft absolutely anything you want. And when a new raid drops a new pattern, you can just get it. You also have a pretty good way of making gold with blacksmithing with the Eternal Belt Buckle, which is always in demand. This is a weapon that adds a gem socket to your belt. And when it comes to bonuses, blacksmithers can take this even further by getting an extra socket on their gloves and their braces. For level working, this profession has similar changes to blacksmithing. You no longer need a specialization to craft certain items. And there is a lot of cool BO items that you can sell on the auction house once you get the patterns that drop from raids. There's also new armor kits added to the game that can make you some really good gold. They'll go on your leggings like they did in TBC. You've got ice scale leg armor, urban leg armor, and frost tide leg armor. The bonus for leather working is your fur lining enchants that go on your braces. For a very beefy stat upgrade better than what you can get from enchanting. You also get a much cheaper personal leg enchant. These have the same stats as the armor kits, but they're just much easier and cheaper to make. If you found the video useful so far guys, please consider subscribing to my channel, that really does help out. And if you're looking for the best leveling guide for Wrath of Lich King Classic made by the world record holding speed levelers for the game, check the description for the Reset XP link. Tailoring still has specialisations very similar to TBC, when you craft a certain cloth, moon shroud, spell weave or ebon weave, when you have a specialisation in it, you get an extra piece of cloth. But the crafting locations are all in Dragon Blight, so you no longer have to go to different parts of the continent of Outland to craft your cloth. Tailoring bonuses have more powerful cloak enchants that come with a proc, so 400 attack power for 15 seconds, similar one for spell power, and then there's a healer one that has a chance to restore 400 mana. Similar to level working, you can also make leg enchants for casters and healers for you to make a little bit of gold. And you also get to become Aladdin with a flying carpet. Now for jewel crafting, there isn't much changes, but they did add new different types of gems like armor penetration and expertise. Like in TBC, you can craft some really nice trinkets that are very useful early on in Wrath of Lich King raiding. There will also be a daily quest in Dalaran that will reward you with tokens, and these tokens can be exchanged for new plans to learn new gems. Your new daily cooldown will be the Icy Prism, where you will research new gems. In early Wrath, you're going to get your rare gems from this, but later on in Trial of Oak Grand Crusade, they made a change where epic gems will be dropping from this. And a personal bonus of dual crafting is being able to craft Dragon Eye gems. For example, the Strength gem that will have 14 extra strength, and you can have three of these socketed onto your items at once. Engineering. Now, this profession is making a huge comeback for Wrath of the Lich King. It's probably going to be the best profession for PvE and PvP. First of all, you've got your Glove Haste Enchant. 340 haste for 12 seconds every one minute. It's perfect for literally every single class. Alternatively, you can get the Hand Mounted Power Rocket that shoots a rocket. This will hit for 1654 to 2020 damage. And now, Rocket Boots isn't a separate item. It's basically an enchant called Nitro Boots which will grant you a huge speed increase for 5 seconds. However, very rarely, you'll get shooted up into the air, but don't worry, a parachute will save you from dying. Natural Boots also comes with a slight crit stat enchant. The parachute is also added as a cloak enchant in Wrath of Lich King. Unfortunately, we don't like the goblin glider just yet. And it will either give you agility or spell power. We also have a frag bell enchant which basically allows you to throw a bomb every six minutes so you don't have to like have the item in your bag. And it will also stack with the Eternal Belt Buckle, so don't have to worry about that. There's also a few other perks which are going to be very useful for people who are going to be gold making. For instance, a portable mailbox. Obviously you have G's, which is a personal repair man and a personal bank. This means you will never have to return to the city when you're out in the open world farming or doing instance farming. You've also got the chop amount, and one of the greatest things is you can use the auction house in Dalaran. You don't have to go back to Stormwind or Orgrimmar. Alchemy now, so the biggest change is that you can only use one potion per fight. Technically, you can pre-part as well, though, but you cannot continue to use potions while in combat. Specializations are still a thing in Wrath of the Lich King, the Elixir Master, Potion Master, and Transmutation Master. 
but they do have a slightly less chance to proc extra items in Wrath. You can also transmute your normal blue gems into epic gems, but these epic gems will only turn up in patch 3.2, but obviously this is one of the best ways to make gold in Wrath. You also have the Northrend Alchemy Research cooldown, that's a three day cooldown, you experiment with herbs with a chance to unlock a new recipe. Alchemy can also craft some really strong trinkets for healers, since it will increase the power of your mana potions. The unique bonus that Alchemy gets is your flasks are more powerful and they also last two hours instead of one hour. So overall, Alchemy is great at saving you money, but also making you money. Inscription is the new profession of the expansion that's already been released in the pre-patch. It allows you to craft glyphs that will change class spells, but you can also craft Dark Moon cards, which can make you a lot of money. Inscription has the Northrend Inscription Research. It's a 20 hour cooldown and you have a chance to unlock new glyph recipes. But if you don't want to wait for the cooldown, you can also buy the Book of Glyph Mastery off the auction house. And your personal bonus is a much more powerful shoulder enchant, more powerful than the Sons of Hoda rep shoulder enchant. Now the last crafting profession is enchanting. Because of the addition of enchanting villains that inscribers can make, the ability for enchanters to make gold is better because they can basically package the enchant on a scroll and then sell it on the auction house. And the bonus for this enchant is exactly the same as TBC, you get extra enchants on your rings. Now let's talk about the bonuses that the gathering professions give. They're definitely not as powerful as the crafting bonuses, but they're still pretty decent. Let's start with skinning. So first of all, you get 40 crit at max rank skinning. The first change to mining is that you can mine a vein in one go. You will also have a one day cooldown to smelt a titan steel bar and these will sell for a decent amount on the auction house, as this will be used for many new blacksmithing craft. And your personal bonus is 60 stamina, it's called toughness. The last gathering profession is obviously herbalism. There's no real changes here apart from there's just new flowers in Northrend, and your new rare flower is the frost lotus, and it's acquired same as TBC, you have a chance to get it when you loot every other flower. Now, your personal bonus for herbalism is you get an extra personal heal, this heals for 3,600 health over 5 seconds with a 3 minute cooldown, it's called Life Bloom. Now to run through the secondary professions, these don't provide any personal bonuses, but if you do have a daily content on them, they can make you a little bit of gold. You've got a little cooking daily quest in Dalaran that will reward you with a small spice bag, and this is a currency that can be used to unlock new recipes or spices. The main way people make gold with cooking is the fish feast. So it will give you attack power, spell power, and stamina for the whole raid, and it has 50 uses, and you just pop it on the ground and everyone can use it. Fishing also has some new daily tasks in Dalaran. The rewards are fishing treasures. For example, you can get new fishing poles or epic gems, but the main item you want is the pygmy oil when you are fishing, because that is used for haste potions, and that's probably the main way you're going to make some cheeky gold. Now, the last profession is first aid. To be fair, it's still pretty underrated in my opinion. I think most people probably want to go for first aid when they're doing really difficult content like Heroic ICC or Ulduar hard modes. It can also be quite useful in PvP. Anyway guys, that is a quick rundown of all the profession changes in Raffle King Classic. My name is Meta Goblin. Until the next video, ciao.